Good evening. I am Manali Chakravarti. Welcome to our today's discussion on behalf of Modok Trainer Academy. Today's topic of discussion is relevance of Buddhist ethics for the welfare of society. The eminent speaker of this topic, Dr. Priyadarshini Mitra. She is an assistant professor in School of Buddhist Studies and Civilization. at gautam buddha university greater noida former guest lecturer at vishwa bharati university shanti niketan now i request to dr mitra please start her deliberation thank you i am audible now yes ma'am okay thank you dear good evening to all of you respected organizer of modok trainer academy and all participants i am dr priyadarshini mitra of kham gautam buddha university uh, i am very much thankful to the organizer organizer team of modok trainer academy and specially i am very much thankful to my beloved gadi bi uh, for giving me chance to deliver my special lecture on buddha ethics which is very much applicable for our present day society already all of you know the title of my paper is the relevance of buddhist ethics for the welfare of society so buddhism is the most pragmatic and humanistic uh, humanistic teaching of buddha to enlighten individual as well as society buddhism is a major universal classical religion and one heterodox philosophical school buddha's all teaching may either be philosophical or ethical or familiar as dharma teaching it is familiar it may be philosophical teaching it may be ethical teaching all as mentioned as the dharma teaching so uh, dharma teaching uh, buddha's all teachings have important ethical approaches which have practical application for that buddhism is a pragmatic and humanistic religion we know when buddha appeared that time society was too much corrupted by so many discriminations buddha preached his dharma teaching to remove all those corruptions from our society for that he told that he did not create any new religion he only create some new ethics to enlighten individuals mind and rectify this society for that buddha was a great social reformer or ethical teacher ethical teacher than the Uh, more than the philosopher or the religious person when individual when individual will be enlightened then society will be rectified as the society is the collective form of individual we know that so what is society society is only the collective form of the individual so for that when individual will be rectified then automatically society also will be rectified and will be perfect so uh, for that buddha was the priest is uh, dharma teaching for betterment of individual as well as the society his teaching is meant not only for monks or nuns but also it is practically applicable for all human beings buddha priest is dharma teaching for removing the suffering from all beings by enlightened human mind it was the main purpose of his teaching according to buddhism the main purpose of life is to end suffering and achieving happiness but another purpose was to rectify individual as an enlightened person for the betterment of society the buddha taught that human suffers because of of their own ignorance we are always running to fulfill our more desire behind all material things which are totally impermanent things 
these impermanent things are not only unable to give us everlasting happiness but also these things bring suffering in our life <clears throat> after achieving enlightenment buddha first preached his dharma teaching which is known as four noble truths and this dharma teaching is the source of buddha's all teachings like philosophical teachings it may be dependent origination three marks of existence karma and rebirth concept of nirvana etc etc whatever buddha's philosophical teaching and ethical teachings like take full path five precepts and four brahma vihara etc all these basic teachings have great ethical approaches for that all sects of buddhism have accepted this teaching as per four noble truths human life is full of suffering we are suffering because because there are some causes behind this suffering and ignorance is the first cause of this suffering so if we want to remove this suffering if we want to remove this suffering we can remove and we can achieve the nirvana as per buddha every person every human beings can achieve nirvana we have that capability so everyone like uh, we uh, if we want to remove this suffering we can remove and we can achieve the nirvana after removing this suffering we will stay at the stage of happiness because supreme bliss or happiness is the condition of nirvana or and or an enlightened mind actually this enlightened mind is a nirvana for achieving this happiness first we have to realize buddha's all teaching and then follow the eightfold path when we will follow the eightfold paths our mind will be rectified or transformed and it will be enlightened and this enlightened mind will be the best friend or ideal person of society because enlightened mind always will be ready to do good for others this enlightened persons will be ready to do wholesome action and to make a good society so removing the suffering and achieving happiness is the purpose of life in buddhism in buddhism nirvana is a blissful condition which can be achieved only in this life when we will follow the eightfold paths then our enlightened mind will be able to destroy our ignorance and will be free from three poison that is greed hatred and delusion of our life our mind will be enlightened and our purpose of life will be achieved we will be free from suffering and enlightened mind will stay with happiness according to buddha anyone can achieve this enlightenment buddhism can be practiced either in society or out of society anywhere the noble eightfold path that means out of society that means in monasteries anywhere not and um, uh, non monk lay person lay woman lay man everyone can follow this everyone can achieve the nirvana the noble eightfold path is the buddhist way of middle path of life that is intended for all people this way of life is offered to all mankind without any distinction so first i will discuss the purpose of life in buddhism then the position of man in buddhism because happiness of buddha, happiness of both individual and society depend on individual mind everything depends on man's mind if, if man wants once man can achieve the enlightenment and can remove their suffering and can become a friend or ideal person of a society then i will discuss on a ethical approach of buddha's dharma teaching where buddha taught the importance of realization of dharma teaching in the conclusion of my paper i will focus on the importance of enlightened mind for being perfect human being or an ideal person to build a perfect society next uh, my uh, i have focused on this point purpose of life in buddhism in buddhism the main purpose of life is to end suffering and achieving endless happiness that is nirvana the buddha taught that human suffers because human continually strives after impermanent things and do not give up permanent happiness we desperately try to hold on those things which are completely impermanent like our friends health material wealth 
even lessons in everything. All these things do not last permanently, and these are the causes of sorrow of ignorant mind. Ignorant mind, ignorant mind, all these things, everything is permanent. For that every moment we are becoming selfish, we are running all this material behind all these material things. The Buddha did not deny that all these things have need in our life that give joy and sorrow both to us. But problems are there, problems are arising when we attach ourselves more with the with these three poisons of life and three poisons of life that is the greed, hatred, delusion. Hmm, three poisons of life and become selfish. This state of our life is harmful for both individual and society. So more attachments are making us selfish and creating problems. Actually, the purpose of his teaching, of Buddha's teaching, was concentrated entirely on the on this problem and its solution. Because when individual will be rectified, then society also will be rectified. Because what is society? Society is the collective form of the individuals. So Buddhism teaches the reality of action and reaction, the importance of realization of imp impermanence of all things, oneself from free, oneself becoming free, oneself from attachments, and provides the path for achieving enlightenment or nibbana. Enlightenment or Nirvana. So his teaching would lessen suffering and eventually end the cycle of rebirth. These teachings are expressed most consciously in in the four noble truths and the novel eightfold path, which together form the foundation of belief for all branches of Buddhism. We have to understand that Buddha was appeared to rectify us and our society. He realized that our society is suffering because we are suffering and we are suffering for our own ignorance. We are ignorant for, our, for, that, for that reason. We are doing unwholesome deeds, unwholesome bad, unwholesome in Akushala karma, bad deeds, bad actions. We are following, we are doing and we are suffering. Buddha taught that if we want to be happy, then we should so then we should do good deeds. We should follow good actions. And for doing good deeds, first we have to achieve our wisdom. And after that, we will follow our moral behavior. So when we will follow this, uh, this then our purpose of life will be fulfilled. We will achieve enlightenment. We will free from suffering. And we will be an ideal person to build a perfect of society. The position of man or individual in Buddhism. Buddhism is a human-centered religion. According to the Buddha, every human is his own master. Every human has potentiality for realizing the real purpose of life and achieving the enlightenment. Man's mind is covered in ignorance for that man cannot realize his real nature. As a result, wrongly man thinks the material world is, the, uh, is permanent and man wants to gain more things, bring only unhappiness, which only bring unhappiness. Man's ignorance leads him to acquire a false identity, self-seeking egoist, and to pretend to be what he is not or is unable to be. If man wants to achieve enlightenment, he can achieve, but man must make an effort to overcome ignorance, to arrive at realization and enlightenment. All great human beings are not born as a great person from their mother's womb, but by their great work, they achieve, they achieve their greatness. Realization and enlightenment cannot be poured into human heart like water into a tongue. We have to cultivate that. We have to cultivate that. Even the Buddha also cultivated his mind to realize the real nature of human beings. That time, after that, he achieved the enlightenment and Siddha became a Gautam Buddha. Buddha always has given the importance on man's position. According to Buddhism, man is supreme. Man is his own master and there is no higher being or power 
that sits in judgment over his destiny. If man wants, then man can change their destiny by own effort or wisdom. The Buddha spoke of individual potentiality, individual responsibility, self-realization, and self-development. He encouraged and stimulated each person to develop himself or herself for achieving one's own happiness or emancipation. Every human being has the power to achieve enlightenment through, through his own personal effort and intelligence. According to Buddhism, man is the best of trainable or educable beings. He has the potentiality of self-perfection by which a life of freedom and happiness can be realized. In order to attain this perfection, man has to develop himself physically, morally, spiritually, and intellectually. Right development of oneself, right development of oneself leads naturally to self-perfection. The encouragement of self-development is a foundation of Buddha's Dharma teaching. So the encouragement of self-development is a foundation of the Buddha's Dharma teaching. As per Buddhism, every individual has potentiality to self-development. The Buddha's standpoint is that good life is open to everyone and the highest truth, Nirvana, can be achieved by every, every individual. So, but we should cultivate that one. The Buddha's, that's for Buddha, the Buddha's standpoint is that good life is open to everyone and the highest truth, Nirvana, can be achieved by individuals. So every human being has potentiality to achieve happiness through self-development. According to law of nature in Buddhism, when man sincerely will do what is right, then the process will bring a corresponding result. This means that one should act out of wholesome motivation. If he struggles, he should do it for the sake of the dharma, that is for the good and for the righteous out of out of love and compassion not for personal gains or from any selfish motives not out of greed or hatred only in this way man can attain to this righteous goal achieving freedom without frustrating the freedom of his fellow beings and winning happiness without inflicting more suffering on the world so man is his own master of his own destiny Man can achieve enlightenment and can become a Buddha. The next point of my paper that is the ethical approach of Buddha's Dharma teaching. When we will discuss Buddha's old teaching, it may either be philosophical or ethical, have great important ethical approach. Because Buddha wanted to rectify individual as well as society. After his enlightenment, the Buddha first preached the Four Noble Truth. Through his teachings, he wanted to preach that every individual is responsible for their own conditions. So, through his teachings, he explained the problem of life and showed the path for removing the problem from life. He taught the middle path, which is free from the true extremes of sensual, indul sensual indulgence and cell modifications or excessive ascetic practices. And he explained the middle path from the experiences of his own life because in his previous life, he had followed the both. It was the sensual indulgence also followed by Buddha and cell modifications also followed by Buddha. After achieving enlightenment, he realized the importance of the middle path. We should follow the middle path. Always we should avoid two extremes. It's self-indulgence and also self-modification. The middle path is a noble or spiritual path for acquiring the freedom for human suffering, from human suffering and attaining the enlightenment. Buddha told that our real condition is happiness, but for our ignorance, we are suffering. To explain this Buddha, to explain this, Buddha taught about the dependent origination. Where he told about dependent origination, one philosophical teaching, a very important philosophical teaching of the Buddha, and where he told about 12 reasons, and this philosophical 
for teaching also I have to discuss it because this uh, other ethical teachings also appeared from this philosophical concept. So it depends on origination where he told about 12 reasons where all are interrelated. Buddha told what this is, that is, this arising, that arises. If the principle of the law of dependent origination in this world all are conditioned for that we are suffering because we are ignorant and for our ignorance we are running behind three poisons of life that is greed hatred illusion delusion etc and becoming unsatisfied and unhappy why are we doing this because we do not understand buddha's another important philosophical teaching that is the three marks of existence what is that According to Buddha, Buddhist traditions, all phenomena other than nirvana are marked by the three characteristics. And that is the impermanence, suffering, and no self. But for our ignorance, we are thinking that everything is permanent. And we are running behind our profit and profit, becoming selfish, doing unwholesome deeds. The first of the three marks is impermanence. First one is the impermanence, that is the anitta. In this phenomenal world, nothing is permanent or stable, unchanging or everlasting. Everything is changing, every, even every moment it is changing. It is not a metaphysical inquiry or any mystical intuition, but a straightforward judgment by investigations and analysis. It is not any intuition. We are not knowing this by our intuition part. It is the, it is the, the straightforward judgment by investigation and analysis. For our ignorance, we do not realize the impermanence of all things. For that, we are running behind greed, hatred, and delusion and suffering. The second mark is the suffering. The Buddha declared there are the three marks of existence. First one is the anitta, impermanence. Second is the suffering. Second mark is the suffering. That is the, uh, the, uh, the Buddha declared that numerous accompaniment of life are painful. That is our birth, aging, sickness, and death are all suffering. When we are born, then we have to face this type of suffering. But our real condition, which we can achieve by our enlightenment, by our enlightened mind, that is happiness. So, but our real condition, which we can achieve by our enlightened mind, that is happiness. And it will be permanent. Actually, it is it is the nibbana. The third of the three marks, the three marks is the no self, anatta. It is the unique and central teaching, teaching of Buddhism. The impermanent nature of phenomena leads to an important conclusion. If everything is characterized by impermanence, then nothing can be identified as self or as a permanent soul. The third characteristic shows that between its arising and cessation, a thing has not got any static phase. The doctrine of insubstantiality is also a crucial teaching in Buddhism. According to this doctrine, there is no permanent or everlasting soul either inside or outside the five aggregates which constitute a being. There is the intrinsic connection between suffering and our delusive sense of self. Anatta denies our separation from other pupil and from the rest of the natural world. There is the no permanent soul. We cannot say this is this is mine. This is mine. So we have no separation. Huh? You and me. That's what the Buddha's views. And the anatta, uh, the absence of any real self substance amounts to accepting everyone as equal. Hmm. The self notion is the root of all evil. With the removal of self notion, all evils are removed. According to Buddhism, the idea of self or soul is not only a false and imaginary be belief with no corresponding objective reality, but is also harmful from an ethical point of view. For it produces such harmful thoughts of being and mind. 
self is desert, attachment, and all other unwholesome states of mind. Buddha's another philosophical teaching, which has great ethical approach, is karma and rebirth. In Indian philosophy, Buddhism has been mentioned as a heterodox philosophical school. In spite of that, Buddha was the follower of middle path. He accepted the concept of karma and rebirth from orthodox school of Indian philosophy. Neither he fully accepted the concept of heterodox, nor, nor he fully accepted the concept of the orthodox. Rather, we can say that he was the follower of the middle path between heterodox and orthodox or eternalism and annihilism. And he did this because he was a great ethical teacher and social reformer. He followed middle path to rectify individual. Whatever good for society, he accepted that. In Buddhism, karma means volitional or willful action. Things we choose to do or say or think set karma into motion. The law of karma is therefore a law of cause and effect as defined as in Buddhism. So any kind of intention, uh, any kind of intentional action, whether it mental, verbal or physical, is regarded as karma. Karma means all moral and immoral volition. This theory of karma of Buddhism is not moral justice or reward and punishment. The theory of karma is the theory of cause and effect of action and reaction. It is a natural law. It is no moral, it has no moral justification, moral judgment. Hmm. As per our nature law, it is happening. It will happen hmm. as per our action. So, it is natural law, which has nothing to do with the idea of justice or reward and punishment. As per our karma, we will be sufferer or injured because every action has reaction. Our result of karma never will be destroyed. Our result of karma never will be destroyed. It is, the, it, it is this doctrine of karma that the mother teaches her child like that that mother teaches her child when he says be good and you will be happy and we will love you but if you are bad you will be unhappy and we will not love you. Karma is the law of cause and effect in the ethical in this ethical in the ethical world. The novel ethical path is one of the is one of um, the ethical principle Buddha described it as the way leading to the suggestions of suffering and the achievement of the self awakening or enlightened human mind. It is used to develop insight into the true nature of phenomena or reality and to eradicate greed, hatred and delusion. The novel Eightfold Path is the fourth of the Buddha's four novel truths. It is also known as the middle path or middle way. The novel Eightfold Path is the practical way of life for acquiring the originality of life, which is happiness. Besides being a path, the novel Eightfold Path is also a state of mind, a state of happiness, something which is universal, ongoing, consistent, enduring. It is the practice of happiness in our daily existence. These eight are, these Eightfold Paths are, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right, effort, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentrations. For our self-transformations, Buddha provided three kinds of training which will come through this eightfold path. The three kind of trainings are wisdom, that is panna, pragga, ethical conduct, seal, and mental discipline that is samadhi. First training is wisdom which will be arising within us when we will follow right view and right intention. So the right view and right intention is the path of wisdom. Second training is ethical conduct or moral behavior which will be built up when we will follow right speech, right action, right livelihood. These right paths teach us to take care in our, in our speech our action and our daily lives to do no harm to others and to cultivate wholesomeness and goodness in ourselves. 
another two ethical teachings are coming out hmm, from from this second ethical conduct that is five pieces five pieces you know abstention from killing abstention from stealing abstention from telling a lie abstention from untesty or abstention from committing adultery and abstention from intoxicating and for sublime state of mind that is the loving kindness compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity all all these ethical concepts also are arising from that second ethical uh, second ethical uh, ethical uh, conduct that is the and that is the buddha's uh, uh, second one that is the seal moral behavior then part of that moral behavior it is it is necessary to refrain from unwholesome deeds of body and speech to prevent the faculties of bodily action and speech from becoming tools of the defilement ethical conduct is used primarily to facilitate mental purification hard training in mental discipline which will be achieved through right effort right mindfulness and right concentration at the path for mental discipline so these right effort right mindfulness and right concentration at the path for achieving mental discipline samadhi the buddhist way not only includes morality but also the practice of meditation and the development of wisdom and outstanding aspects of the buddha's teaching is the adoption of the eightfold path is the middle middle path the buddha advised his followers to follow this path so as to avoid the extremes of sensual pleasures and self mortification the middle path is a righteous path for a path of life which does not advocate the acceptance of decrees given by someone outside oneself the middle path is a plan and practical course for achieving enlightenment and becoming an ideal person for society a person can make real progress in righteousness and insight by following this path a person can make real progress in righteousness and insight by following this eightfold path according to the buddha anyone who lives in accordance with the with this dharma will be will be succeed to enlighten oneself when a person lives according to dharma he or she will also be living in harmony with all beings and stay with endless happiness and definitely definitely which will be welfare for our society now i reach at my conclusion i have this the conclusion after evaluating the buddha's dharma teaching as an ethical path to enlighten human mind i would like to conclude my paper with my own opinion according to buddha buddha's dharma teaching our real our real state is happiness but for our ignorance we are suffering we we if we can realize and follow buddha's teachings then we can remove our suffering and enlighten ourselves and enlightened mind is always ready to do wholesome deeds so through so through the buddha's dharma teachings dharma teachings we can enlighten our minds and for our enlightened mind we will be an ideal person to make our society perfect where equality justice freedom will be established so lastly i would like to say that if we realize and follow buddha dharma teachings then every individual can achieve enlightenment and can become a happy person and can make a perfect society so in this purpose here i would like to um, share some, my some words which already i have mentioned in my own book that is perfect knowledge wisdom carries healthy minds capability healthy mind builds our moral behavior capacity both inspired us to grow mental discipline ability mental discipline ability brings in our tranquility this three wisdom mental behavior and discipline purify our inner quality 
Alkane in our quality brings our brings our mental purity. Our suffering will be removed by our original potentiality. Uncovered awakened potentiality brings happiness in reality. Individual happiness builds happy society. Happy society is the collecting form of individual's ability. This happy society follows equality, liberty, and fraternity. So, ultimately, our own potentiality establishes problem-free society. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Any question from anyone? I would like to take some questions and some interactive session. Uh, yes, Tushash sir, please. Tushash sir, please carry forward. If you have any question. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, is it audible? Ah, audible, audible. Madam, I got a query. Gautam mm -hmm. Buddha, Light of Asia, 